more than just you know expand their their palate of listening to something like this, and then maybe they'll once they get into the sort of progressive aspect of this, discover some of the albums that influenced me and artists like myself, and and realize, oh, okay, you know, there's all these great records that were made, um, but that you may not have uh, had a bridge to, and in this potential, and that does what happened for me, ironically, with with Genesis. Mm -hmm. is their hit single, uh, Turn It On Again, which is mm -hmm. a cool song. Yes. I heard that, and I liked it, and then I, I, I listened to other Genesis songs, and I liked those even more, and then I bought the whole catalog, and I'm like, okay, now I get it, you know. But to just go dive right into Supper's Ready as your first song, it's like, you know, that's a bit much. So I think, um, hopefully, I mean, that was definitely just part of my mission, my goal, is to make music that is universal and uh, accessible, not so out there that you're like, mm, that's really weird, you know, it's like, I like weird music too, but it's like, for me, I'm more of a traditional songwriter who can play prog. Mm -hmm. So I dress up my songs at the core, they're songs, some of these songs I can just play on acoustic guitar or piano and you go, Oh, that's just a song. That's not progressive until I bring out the mellotron and then <laughs> you know, the drum is like now it's progressive. Yes, but I, I think that that's what makes it hopefully appealing to a wider audience than typically progressive rock does right out of the you know and uh, the progressive rock fans hopefully get enough of what they want out of it that playing Crossing of Fates instrumentals and things like that to accept the maybe more slightly pop side of it. I don't do anything too pop. You know, some bands, I won't name names, but have really done some like fluff pop oh, yes. and you know <laughs> made big hits with it, but the, the old fans are like, mm, I don't like that one. Yes. You know? I don't believe in that. I think you have to balance it and keep it artistic. Even when we did Closer to You, which unfortunately wasn't a single, but that was a song that I wrote uh -huh. uh, for the album, that to me was on, on Dimension Art was an example of a song that was very kind of Bill Collins Genesis style, you know, could mm -hmm. be a single. Uh, but when you read the lyrics, it's like there's depth there, you know, a timeless cocoon and all these th concepts. Uh, so that I think if you were, you know, uh, a progressive rock fan, you could accept that song as like, you know, it's still a good song. So and it happens even with the classics, for example, with Genesis, when they changed to Phil Collins, and Phil Collins started with ballads and some other <laughs> kind of pop uh, experiments, yeah. it changed it, and the people uh, was arguing about why Genesis is playing pop. <laughs> so I understand that part, and, and I, I think that it's part of the congruence that you have to have with your, your followers, with the people that are listening to your music, because that's what they are appreciating, the, the kind of music that you are doing, not experimenting maybe with, with something that is not, not in your scope, right? So uh, that I totally understand that. And, and well, actually, Dave, I, I want to congratulate you because uh, I have been... Uh, listening to your album and, and, uh, and I have been seeing the last part of this creation and I can tell you that it's a complete piece of art. Uh, it includes different kind of moods. It's, it's created for, as you have mentioned, it's universal, it's created for different kind of people, not only for progressive rock fans, but also for, for music lovers and, and, and people that is looking for new, new songs, new projects and, and something new to experiment. So congratulations for Thank this you. new album. And um, I don't know if you are going to come back to Mexico to make some tours to Latin America. I would love to. So we are expecting on that. We, we can come with you. Yeah, I, you know, I think the more uh, word of mouth and the more is known, you know, I th there's a term grassroots, uh, which is basically like building up from word of mouth and building, because we don't have the big machine anymore. In fact, it's an interesting thing. I mean, let's say the big record companies, if they're going to put money behind a band, it's not usually bands like this, you know, it's maybe Katy Perry or, you know, <laughs> Justin Bieber, stuff that's going to be big, big, big money mm -hmm. uh, and proven to be, you know, just, that's where the whole sort of generic thing comes in. It's like, oh, this is just like this and that made money, so this makes money. And it's like a business, right. you know, as opposed to how it used to be, which is you took chances on artists and that's why you had... Led Zeppelin and Supertramp and Genesis and you know all these different bands. I want to see that happen again 
not necessarily arenas, but concerts, a concert yeah. experience, you know. When I have enough people that will come out to see a concert with Dave Kersner Band, we'll put wherever it is in the world. And if it's Latin America, I'm here. You know, I, I, tacos, you know, we'll have a party. But uh, <laughs> it will be a show. My dream is to do, let's say, the deluxe edition of this album from beginning to end with audio, visuals, and, and the light show, just like you were going to, let's say, a Pink Floyd concert. The complete experience. Yeah, because yeah. it, it, it's fun. It's not just, it's not for my ego. It's not for the money. It's for, because it's a great experience, you know, to be able to go to a show, know the songs, sing along, listen, and just be moved, you know, emotionally, and go and talk about it. Yeah, oh, I went to see this show, and it was like, there was all this stuff, and everything in the show enhanced the music because you can do that in a show, the light show, and you know what, and, and just like we did when if you saw Pink Floyd or you saw Genesis, you talked about it for, for yes. years. Because yes. you're like, I saw Genesis when they did this, you did, oh my god, I can't believe it. And so I think to create memories, right? That right. I would love. That's my goal. That's it's I'm like doing. recreating your album in, in a, a physical experience, as you mentioned. It's not. I would say that it's different to that. The, paraphernalia or something like that, that it's only lighting and it's only big screens. It's, it's creating the, the experience beyond what you are listening. And, and, and I totally agree with you and I would be very glad to see a show of Dave Cares Nirvana here in Mexico or in, in any country. When you be. listen to the deluxe edition, which isn't out yet, it's designed in a, an interesting way. Like I said, I, I, I totally took advantage of this idea of, okay, I'm going to make a two CD version thought from the beginning, not after, years later, oh, what do we have here, let's put some extra stuff on. No, this is a designed, expanded experience. It's like listening to the concert that I have in my head. This, is, with all the sort of introductions and uh, suspense, like Stranded, for instance, starts mm -hmm. off with this, like, you know, uh, it's a sort of dark side of the moon. Yeah, yeah, yes. like a build up. <laughs> you, well, you hear, for instance, the sound effects of the main characters, uh, crashing down to the desert, you hear that, and then it mm -hmm. sets the, st the tone of the stage. So it's like listening to a, a movie and a concert. Um, and then when you have the playing, you hear it, and it's like, it's meant to be played live. It sounds like, we're, I mean, it sounds like we're playing live, you know? Right. And jamming and all that stuff. So it's something that has to happen. And I would love nothing more than to tour uh, all of Latin America. With the album. And we will be waiting for that and for, for all, well, actually for the new uh, deluxe version, we will be waiting for that. Uh, it, it is important to mention that it's available right now to order, right? Uh, your album, you can order it in, in Amazon, uh, in iTunes, you can download it, and even in your portal. Yeah, on DaveKersner.com, you can get the CD version uh, of both. You can order both of them. This is shipping now. Uh, BurningShed.com also in England, which is a very popular progressive rock site. Um, the Merch Desk. There's other places like that specialize in this style of music. Uh, but, you know, as it'll expand as there is interest. That, that's like my general uh, philosophy on everything. Is like, listen, my job is to create the music and to make it as great as I can and to hopefully uh, excite people out there. What happens next is, you know, I don't have some big, massive machine behind me putting billboards up for me, you know, like right. a, uh, TV ads. It's, it's pretty much word of mouth, YouTube videos. We are working on some music videos. Those will okay. be fun. Uh, I think Into the Sun will be maybe the first one. And there's a really cool story for that. Uh, and just, uh, yeah, people sharing on Twitter and Facebook and, and getting it out there. Um, the more demand there is, the more we're, we're going to do. We're, everyone I've worked with on this record is excited to play it live. So, you know. So spread the word because <laughs> <laughs> it, it is worth it. Is worth it. I, I can tell you that it's a great album. It, it's a good opportunity for new people, as we have commented. It has a, really a, a very good a piece of art of, on each uh, song that you will hear here. And, and also it, it will make you travel as, as you were expecting with a, a, a legacy album from, from those old bands, uh, classical bands, not legacy, old bands, because legacy sounds like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, thank you once again for the, for the interview, uh, uh, congratulations for this new, new project and, and well, 
we will be in a very